Support for Tom's Brain comes from Uber. Get your free £10 credit by using the code UberTomPod. T-O-M-P-O-D. Join now and get your first £10 ride for free. while since I've done one of these and it was because of the fact that podcast is supposed to make me feel relieved and as if I'm reflecting on events and then when I release the podcast I feel like a purpose has been served and some good has been made you know because the whole like mission statement for the podcast is to kind of normalize my condition and mm, get an a popular awareness of it that isn't terrifying because what is out there based on my condition, the information at hand straight away is is terrifying and it shouldn't be like that it, and it kind of annoys me uh, and so that's the mission statement and I felt like the last episode I completely missed the point and I walked away from that episode feeling unsatisfied so I thought I was going to release an episode and then we'd have this episode that we are on now that I thought I'd, I took an extra, an extra gap. So it's been four weeks, and coincidentally, we resume normal service of the podcast uh, every two weeks, hopefully. Uh, uh, and it just so happens that we resume today with the you know I was going to say it was the sixth anniversary but it's actually the eighth the eighth anniversary my eighth gay anniversary eight years ago on Saturday, well, not on Saturday, eight years ago on the 25th of April, I came out. I said I was gay for the very first time in front of another human being. Um, and how did I celebrate it today? Um, I did nothing. I'm afraid I've I've I bought a uh, well I've I upgraded my phone since we've last spoke and I'm actually cheating a bit and I'm recording this part of the podcast on my new iPhone six plus because I didn't feel like um l- lumping my uh laptop out but also another reason is because I'm only going to be talking for a short while and then I'm going to be handing over to a previously recorded segment that I did with Nikki and I hope you enjoy that I really want to try and do more episodes with other people as much as 
I have to talk about if I really push myself I feel like it's more engaging for you if there is another voice because admittedly this voice could send you to sleep which maybe maybe, maybe that's what you want maybe that's what you want but I don't really want you to fall to sleep. I want you to listen. And so hopefully this episode you'll listen and you'll find out all about the first time I ever said I was gay. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's nothing really more to say. We'll take a short break. And when I come back, we're talking to Nikki. Like it's an alley of the introduction, and then this is the first, um, the first guest on on the Tom's Brain podcast, which. Um, if obviously if you listen to this, then it went ahead. Um, and today has been one of my normal transfusions. Everything went according to plan. I'm just wrapping up, and we'll be going home soon. You probably know what my transfusions involve. Um, so I won't bore you with that. What I uh, set up the machine to talk at the hospital for a specific reason which was to um talk to Nikki and and say hello and say goodbye as well oh that's quite sad yeah um because what I wanted to ask was I'll, I'll turn off the glare of that what um what is I think if I sit here I'll be better what is like the first memory that you have of me scrabble <laughs> that's it just <laughs> No, I don't know, because I don't remember not knowing you, I think, when working in clinic, because I started in clinic in 2004, and obviously would have known you straight away, so I've, probably all of my memories of clinic are you're there, and I know that we played lots of games, I realized I was pretty thick at Scrabble, and I still am, um, and that you used to like cheese sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Um, what was it? Yeah, cheese sandwiches and plain crisps. And um, salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar crisps, I got yeah. that bit wrong. I remember the cheese sandwich. Um, do you actually, I remember the first time I met you? Oh, good. Because I just started, Sarah was still on 10T, and uh, you were in the middle room, I remember exactly where you were. Um, and Sarah was in with you, I think she'd come to see you from 10T, and Kat was showing me around. And I remember coming down to see, I think Kat was introduced me to you, I think. And at the same time, Sarah was saying that she was leaving to go and do her traveling. Yeah, she just decided to go. And that was the first time I met you. Well, wow, that just came back to me then. That's really weird. It did as well. It just came back to me. Do you remember meeting me? No, that's the weird thing. Like, I remember it was Carol and Joanne, and then. Um, Kat and Charlotte. Wasn't it? Gosh. I'm struggling to remember it, Charlotte. Because she was only there for less than a year. She started, she looked very much like Kat. She had very long hair, looked very similar to Kat, and she was there for quite a short time. And then I took Charlotte's job. Because Kat had only been there a year when I started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I, I've, I've got this memory of playing the game that I invented with you. Did we ever play the Pokemon game? No. I invented this game with all the character little like um it was a basically like a trading card game. Mm. So you had all the Pokemon and then you would go around the board. And I was like I I I made this game obviously when Pokemon was big and I was like I was obsessed with like getting everyone I knew to play it to like tell me that it was a good idea. <laughs> I don't know if I remember that. Maybe that was a cat game. I don't think I ever played it with a cat. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Can I remember that? Can I remember like that was like the well, I guess Pokemon kind of trailed off maybe before you joined then. Maybe. Then I guess Playmobil. <laughs> Did we ever play Playmobil? I think me and you a lot of board games, I think. I think we did a lot of board games. That was our thing, wasn't it? We did, yeah. But it was, but I do remember, I think it's because I never really played Scrabble until I played it with you. <laughs> and I kind of, you educated me, I suppose, on Scrabble. Oh. And I have to say, finally, what, 10 years later? Yeah. I finally won a game. <laughs> it took me 10 years to beat you at Scrabble. And that was only just. Um, well, you might be interested to know that I've uh, joined an online group. Uh-huh. That um, arranges oh, the Scrabble group, real life meetups. Yeah, and so hopefully I'll be able to start uh, getting my butt whooped by some actual people. It's who about time, though. To be fair. <laughs> Far too good at it, really. Um, yeah, so I joined this meetup group that um, the I went to the first you. you um, I don't know if you know about it, it's called Meetup. Mm-hmm. And so you feel it's a free infinite, free free pop, create your free profile and um, you tick off as many interests as you have mm-hmm. and then they tell you what's going on around Much your, your city. Yeah. But specific people have had to create a group to um, collect all the Many, as many people as possible that are interested in the subject that you like. Mm-hmm. So obviously for my one was like cinema. So there's a Leeds movie group. And so I met them for the first time on Monday and we went to see uh, Maps to the Stars. Oh, no, I heard that. Yeah. Um, I hadn't heard of it until it started and then I remember that I saw a trailer for it um, very early in the year. Was it quite a big group? Um, there was me and five other people, mm. um, and so after it finished, we went to a pub, um, and I, obviously, I'm not a, p- a pub person. You don't come across a pub person. No. Um, coffee for a hot chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it was convenience, because, like, it's right outside the cinema. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, well... My bus is going to be 28 minutes, so I'll wait. And I'm, I'm glad I did because, like, always the thing about going to the cinema on my own is that I, I like see a good film and then it's kind of like I'm, I want to talk about it, yeah. like dissect it and stuff. So, all these people who I went to see the film with, they have the same attitude. So, you know, I had a lot to contribute to the conversation. Yeah. Was it quite a mixture of people then? Yeah, um, there's um, two kind of um, middle-aged women and then a student girl and then a, an, old, an older man and then like a middle-aged man. Mm-hmm. Have you kept in touch with them? Were you going to go? Yeah, well, because of, meet, of the meet-up group. Mm-hmm. It's all easy, like self-contained, like you don't have to like feel pressured to text or... It's quite nice because it's quite safe as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, the now that I've got that out of the way, like, I literally joined um, on Saturday, I think it was. Yeah. So now that I've got the first me out of the way, I started joining a bunch of other groups as much as I can, like, because some of them aren't so specific, but they include cinema visits. Yeah. So, like, it'll be a chance to meet other people. Sounds good. Yeah, because, like, what are your impressions of me, um, like, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Like, I want to say flowering, but... <laughs> that, that, you mean growing up? Yeah, yeah, I guess growing up and sort of, like, because of about, I went through this period of, like, um, shyness. Have you ever... Well, I, I don't think you were shy with us, I guess, because you knew us, though, didn't yeah. you? Because um, this is, like, the only place, like, I've felt safe kind yeah. of thing. 
What I do remember is when you were moving from children's over to adults, and I said, well, no, it's not adults, but, um, and they put you, it was in Bexwing, wasn't it? And they put you in that ward yeah. full of old people, yeah. so to say that. <laughs> but coming to see you in that massive bay on your own in that chair. And that was it when there was nothing going on, was it? Yeah, that was. And you couldn't see you there before you, you knew you were coming here. That was horrid having to see you in there. And when you were usually with us all day on the um, in clinic, and then having to come and see you sat in that massive day all by yourself was horrible. Yeah, that was um, tough to before they had the uh, outpatient set up. Because mm. at, at that point, then you were thinking, you know, you obviously are growing up, and you don't be surrounded by the kiddies anymore, and you know, you are growing up. I think sometimes you get stuck in this. When you're with your in clinic, you forget that people are growing up. And it's like, it's a silly thing to say, we see them so much. But it's like the young people that they finish treatment, they come back for follow up, and they come back and it's like, wow, we've grown up all the time. <laughs> and you kind of forget that that, and that's really so deep, we kind of forget that happens because we've seen people all the time. And you forget actually that people are growing up. You don't be surrounded by children. You're a grown up now and you want to be doing grown up things in a grown up area. Yeah. So. What's weird is like, it was a seven year gap between. It's, it's kind of been seven years since I've last been on Children's Day Hospital. Yeah. yeah. And um, then seeing you in your job here. Mm -hmm. But, like, in terms of, like, sometimes yeah, you see people seven years later and it's kind of awkward. Yeah. But, like, with you, I literally feel like it's picked up exactly yeah. the same as... Which is nice. I'm glad you feel that way, actually. Mm. That's really good. And I feel the same, actually. I don't feel like it's not been seven years yeah. since I've not seen you. In fact, I didn't realise it was seven years since I've not seen <laughs> I know, you. That's crazy thing. Um, no, and that's nice, actually. But you're still Tom. Do you know what I mean? You're still... Yeah. Oh, I know. You're just a lot more... You've always been, I think, quite worldly, haven't you? You, sort of, <laughs> you know, a lot more for your age, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, I'm um, um, just like, it's, uh, I'm just like, there's, there's been no time for being immature, really, like, because you got to, like, kind of grow up all, quite quickly when you're having needles stuff in you. Because the things that you know and things that you've gone through is not what everybody would go through. Yeah. So you do grow up quickly because you're in this kind of environment. Um. But I guess while you've been growing up, it's also been Haley, your sister, and going through the whole when she wanted to work in the cruise ships. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, then I'd not seen you through the big gap to where she's now had children. Mm. So that was the difference as well, with your family. But your mum's still the same. Yeah. <laughs> she looks glamorous every time she walks in. <laughs> I keep telling her that. So it's like, because she, she went to this, um, uh, who did she go to the Ella Air concert? Oh. Um, and, like, she went with um, my stepdad and I was like saying to her, like, you can kind of pass for in your thirties. Yeah. You'll float by, but uh, I'm not sure that um, Steve will. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's going to like, he's going to have to make it. I just it. think he'll be great. I'll get a young woman on his arm. <laughs> I don't know, are they? <laughs> no, she does look good, your mum. Very good. So what's next for Nikki then, now that you're going back? Well, I finish tomorrow and I go back to the LGI to War 33 and I'll be there till March till Kat comes back. Um, and then between now and then, I'm at college as well because like, I'm studying again. Yeah. So I'll keep doing that. But between now and then, there's a potential for a third kid to come out, which will be a bit of an extension of Kat and Carrie. Um, so, yeah, so I'm kind of hoping... That might be a possibility for me, but we have to wait and see what happens. That's obviously not a guaranteed thing, um, so I will apply for it and see what happens. And then hopefully I'll still be around um, floating about, so I'll still see you then as well. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you want to ask me? <laughs> um, Go on, you can ask me anything. Like, because this is like the last time, so whatever, like... You've always like wanted to know. It's pretty hard when we talk about stuff. You'll you'll say. Um. You know I you know I want to I want to ask ask you like honestly, but you have to hold the microphone close closely because I'm not entirely sure how. It's picked up anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's it actually... been devastating if it hasn't. Is it actually? Doing it anything? is, but like the tiniest. Okay. Thing. Um. Right. It's gonna be like I've never. Oh, oh no. 
Who got interrupted? No. No. Come on. Um. Right. So when we like when I first initially saw you come back here, yeah, like we got to talking, and I can't remember what it was, but like obviously I was talking about um wanting to do was it the um the undeadables yeah um but i think even before that like you was always asking like if i've if been met anybody. seeing anyone yeah and then like i just like always like assumed that you knew i was gay and then but then like when we were finally having a conversation and i said he like we'd we'd all, we'd never never used the word he before. Like it seemed as if something clicked inside of you, and like that maybe that you didn't know until. Do I'd you know what's that. funny is because I've known you for so long, and I wasn't sure how to how to ask, but I kind of <laughs> knew, but I didn't know how to ask. So when we were chatting, I was waiting for you to say he, and you never did. And I thought, oh, how do I go about this? <laughs> Isn't it bad? And I I know I probably should have just asked. But I thought. If you want to tell me, you'll tell me. And I had to wait for that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really bad on my part, isn't it? But I, And then at one point we did say, oh, I can finally start saying he now because yeah. you've said it. So I am really sorry. That's really bad, isn't it? No, I, can, I totally picked up on the fact that something clicked. And I was like, I never made it clear. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know, it's those things. It's kind of one of those, it's like you said, it was almost like it was there, but it wasn't. You know what I mean? It was kind of... It, we kind of knew both knew, but do you know what I mean? And yeah, exactly. I just needed you to confirm it. In a see, it's, it's weird because like I thought I had that thing with my best friend, mm. and then um, up until this year, like I, I had a conversation with her, and then she was like, "What? Sorry, what? You're gay?" And then I was <laughs> You're like, like, "Yeah." I've, we've, we've, I've been talking to you about like how I like men and stuff, and like it never <laughs> like. I just, and maybe I, because like, I just always assumed I'd never actually used he yeah. or men or stuff. I just kind of went bad on my part. But I guess you just assume, don't you? So at what point did you know? What did you tell people? Um, I knew like at 18, like there was a, there's a questioning bit between 16 and, because I came out of intensive care and went to sixth form. And then I was like... Pretty... Did I know you were into intensive care? Yeah. I, I did my GCSEs in hospital. Right. And then I got my results the first day I went into intensive care because I had a, um, it was a blood infection um, from... Uh, I guess it was from a hip and line. Yeah. Um, and the, the antibiotic they put me on I was allergic to it, but they didn't know I was allergic to it. Yeah. So that's what got me um, to, like, intensive care because by the time they pulled me off the antibiotic, I'd got quite bad. And then I got pneumonia, so I stayed for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. So then, so this is, so that when I, when I had my first year of sixth form, I was kind of, like, rebuilding my life. And it took me that long to kind of realise that, like, like, for my hormones to kick in, I guess. Because I'd kind of, like... I'd gone through high school just kind of being unaware of sex or anything. Yeah. And then, so like when I started sixth form, obviously like you're out of uniform and you've got a lot more time to socialise. Yeah. Because especially me, I only had like two subjects at the most, three subjects a, a week to study. So like there was a hell of a lot of time where I socialised. And then, so like... A year in, I was kind of like, well, like there was, a, there was a gay guy in in the sixth farm, and I was like, that's all the um like real life knowledge that I had, and I was like, but I'm not the same as him, yeah. So I, I was confused, and then when I, by the time I'd left, I was like comfortable enough to say it to myself, mm -hmm. but I didn't say it to my. Um, uh, uh, the first person I came out to was Simon, and uh, I, I came out to match that during my transfusion. Really? Um, 
it was 2007, I think. Yeah. So actually, I, I feel kind of bad now because you'd obviously have been there. <laughs> but I was just like, I was having a really... Um... Was that while we were in clinic? Mm-hmm. Hmm. But I guess if you'd only just told Simon, I think that's kind of you telling somebody and then it needs to settle with you first, doesn't yeah. it? He's like broadcasting it. Yeah, because um, I'd been writing all this poetry and songwriting lyrics and I said and I was coming in for my job I used to have three days of treatment yeah so I was on the last day of that third day and at the in between I'd, I'd given him all this writing that I'd done and I'd said you know read this and you know can you like tell me if you think like I'm okay like am I am I struggling and then he said, well, you know, what is it that it all, what does it all mean, this writing? And I'm just like, it's there. Like, I remember, um, like, closing my eyes and holding my breath and not looking and just Aww. saying, like, um, I'm gay. And, and, and then, like, then that was it. And, and then I didn't tell my mum for another two years. I think. Really? Yeah, it wasn't until 2009. Um, and it was just one night in front of the TV when it was just me and her and we got onto a conversation and I don't know how we got onto it, but I said, um, would it bother you if I was gay? And she said, no. And then she said, are you? And then I said, yeah. And she was surprised. <laughs> think she knew? No. She, she, she said she probably she didn't know. But the good thing about telling my mum was was the kind of person who can um like it didn't worry me at uh, once she knew she could tell everyone except my dad i said let me tell my dad because yeah. like, he's my dad yeah and so i did two weeks later and and weirdly enough like it like wasn't even like because like and like <laughs> i can't explain it but we'd, we'd come back from the cinema so dad dropped me off at home and I knew it was like I had to do it because it'd been two weeks, and if it goes any longer, my mum's gonna explode. Like yeah. <laughs> so I was like, um, "Yeah, I, I've told mum, and I've got to tell you now that I'm, I'm gay." And my dad was like, "And so it's like, what do you expect me to do? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make a difference." So. That's a really nice response from both of my dad. I'm so lucky. For some young people, telling your parents that could be incredibly stressful. Yeah, so that's really nice. Sorry, mm. what do you hope to get out of your day disorder if you get on? I know, that's the thing. You thought about it. I'm yeah. guessing you have thought about it lots. I just want, I, I'd really, as selfish as it sounds, I'd love a platform to kind of like just have my own voice. Yeah. I've never felt like there's been anywhere short of like pushing myself out there. Like if in the case of my podcast, all it does is is me self-promoting yeah um it, it's kind of only like has and like my writing like i said one person read it and it like meant, the, nice. wor- meant yeah. the world to me so if there was like somebody who would be willing to give me a chance like that's why i'm always trying to do stuff with jimmy teens tv yeah because they've got quite a, a wide reach so there's that aspect of doing it obviously being on tv and kind of like Hopefully, people won't hate me. They <laughs> won't hate you. Not possible. And then um, it would just be nice to meet a guy who hasn't, who, because the only way that I meet guys at current uh, is online. Yeah. And so this, it still kind of is online because it's, but it's it's kind of a different spin on it. Yeah. Like, and and it is somebody that does want to meet somebody, isn't it? That's the whole yeah. point. Yeah, that's the thing. Like the the match. Yeah. As close as they can. They said they'd let you know either way. Then, if you don't get on, they'll let you know. I should hope so. A bit awful. Just, but it just seems no, a long no, time. No, it just seems a long time since you did it to have but nothing. I checked the Facebook page and they. Um, somebody else had left a comment 
on the 26th of November, I think, uh, sorry, September, saying when will we know if we've been picked. So at least I know. Yeah, somebody else is waiting as well. Yeah. Um, Can I click on their profile and have a look? Yeah, uh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just an uh, aspiring football, oh. disabled football player. Yeah. Um, I think he's only like 16 or something. All right. But um, stiff competition. Have you sort of said about what age group you prefer? Yeah. I was like, oh, that was the hilarious part um, when we were being interviewed. So it was me, my mum and my sister. And so... Like the question was asked, what kind of man do you want? And I said, like, um, you know, over 30, um, hairy, bigger. <laughs> and my mum, my mum's face was just, just was like, <laughs> what? And then, and then I was like, well, what did you think I want? And, and she was like, I thought you wanted someone t- um, like tall and well presented and clean shaven and, and like, I guess I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> I think, I think she was thinking David Beck and, I, and I'm thinking, like, <laughs> now who's the exact um, like template of a guy I like? Um, especially, like, that everyone can instantly think of and visualise. Relate to it, yeah. Yeah, because, like, I'm quite specific. Like, I'd say Seth Rogen. Yeah. It's but but um more like not too like if you've seen um fifty fifty no no makes it um which which one have you seen with him in um um um, um is it super bad no Seth Rogen it was in was he the one where he gets the girl pregnant uh yes um, knocked, up. knocked up yeah but so like after that yeah in still in that he was quite bulky. Yeah. And I mean, that's fine. I'm like, obviously not in any position to discriminate about weight because I'm as thin as a grasshopper. <laughs> um, so. So is my husband. It's not fair having a skinny <laughs> husband. It's not on. <laughs> I've weighed the same since I was 16. If I could say the same. <laughs> we're getting so dark, yeah. I know it is actually, isn't it? <laughs> we're going to forget we're in here soon. We're actually about to run out as well. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's a good time to, to wrap, wrap up. things up. And uh, I wish we'd done this sooner. We could yeah. have done like a weekly little um, little thing, couldn't we? I wish to. Well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Um, I don't have to. How how can I contact you? If you because you are going to be not using the mobile link. I'll be on Cat's mobile though. Oh. Ah, my God! It's like time's up. <laughs> Cat's mobile. I'll get that off. I'll you. get that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much. And um, I honestly. Let's hope it's not another seven years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs>
the next time I'll see Nikki will be when Carrie is off having another baby. And we all laughed and thought it was hilarious. But guess who's gone and gotten herself pregnant again? Carrie. But it's quite the achievement because something I didn't know was that Carrie's first pregnancy was IVF. And now she's gone and got herself pregnant naturally, which is a surprise and a blessing. So I'll be keeping you up to date with that. I'll probably get carry on again just so we can have a really good giggly old chat because she's the best at pulling words out of me whether it be through my mouth or through Scrabble <laughs> or Boggle. And she won't be leaving until the end of the year. So that's got plenty of time to catch up with her and possibly Nikki again. And I can... I'd, I'd love to get Simon on the podcast to hear how I'd because I've never really asked how he felt when I came out to him. He was the first person I ever came out to, and you know whether he knew, and because I came out to him, and then I didn't say I didn't come out to anyone else for another two years, so. I wonder how, like, I can just wonder, like, if maybe he felt a bit guilty for not being supportive for me. Like, I can feel, I can imagine if somebody had done that in my, sh in, if I was in his shoes, that, you know, I would kind of, like, push them to tell. Because, like, once the ball was rolling, it, that's when it should have gone, but... Hey ho, everyone's different, and I guess I just needed that extra buffering in order to work up the courage to tell my mum. And we shall get to that story another time because this is the end of the podcast, and at the end of the podcast, I like to give a little rundown of all the places where you can contact me such as Twitter, at LGBTom, there's Instagram, at Tom's Brain, there's my email, tomsbrain2, at yahoo.co.uk, there's my website, thomasmcnab.wordpress.com, I don't blog much, but it kind of houses all the relevant information. Until next time, stay safe, stay sober, stay dry, <laughs> and stay out of the sun, okay? I know that we're getting to that time of the year where it's getting warmer, but just keep your wits about you, and if you're going to be in the sun, put on some sun cream, okay? Take it from somebody who knows. Any exposure to the sun damages your skin. So just wear a light SPF. 15, 10. Get it in a moisturizer. Slap it on every day. And your skin will thank you for it. If there was anything that I could go back and tell myself, it would be to moisturize. And gentlemen, <laughs> that's, that's that song, isn't it? Wear yeah. Wear sunscreen. sunscreen. If I could offer you only one tip for the future, sunscreen would be it. The long-term benefits of sunscreen can be improved by scientists, whereas the rest of my advice, 
no basis more reliable than my own meandering experience. I will dispense this advice now. 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 now.